happens the first of the book of James. And James is going to talk to us about trials. I said the benefit of trials. It says, James, the bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And I want to highlight the word fall. Because sometimes we try to count it all joy when we enter into a trial. Uh, there's a difference between falling into a trial and entering into a trial. When we fall into an area, it's because we didn't know that that hole was there. When we enter in, we go in with knowledge that is there and we just do our own thing. And so you can't count it on joy when you go into an area where you know you're in violation and you do it anyway. There's a difference between falling into a temptation and then entering into a temptation. I always talk the story about a good friend of mine who was telling me that he wanted me to pray for him because he fell in sin. And I said, well, how did you do it? He said, man, he said, listen, man, I hooked up with this old girl and we went to the hotel. And, and I said, you did? He said, yeah. And I said, man, and I, said, I said, so you, you actually met up with her. You, you planned that. He said, yeah, we planned it, you know. And I said, and then you went to the hotel and I said, you drove there, right? He said, you drove there. God, you had to go in there and get a room, pay for a room. I said, you get all that, you didn't fall. You entered, you, you had knowledge about what you were doing. And that was not a falling in the sin. That was an entering in. That's, that's a total different situation. I say, when you fall into something, it's something you weren't aware that was there. If, if I fall in a hole, it's because I did not know the hole was there. But if I tell you the hole is there and you go fall in the hole, then you need to be in the hole because I told you it was there. Uh, there's a difference between entering in and falling in. This James said that he wanted us to count it all joy. The word count it all joy means to add it up. That, that means that there's some value in it if we, if we go through it with the right attitude. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, uh, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce patience. That means that when we're going through a trial, our faith is being tested and, and it will produce patience. And then it says that let your patience have its perfect work. That, that means patience have a job to do. But we, we've got to allow the patience to do its work. Sometimes we, we get very anxious when we're going through something because we want to go right through it. We, we don't want to tarry it. Sometimes you got to go through it and allow the patience of God to, to build you up and to strengthen you. It says, let patience have her perfect work that you might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. That means that patience will get you to the place where you can have it all. You'll be resting in the promise of God. You know, it's amazing that young people that are surrounded by the word will go through trials and they'll go through with the right attitude and it will produce great character in their lives. And, and I, I talk to people all the time. I, I just recently went through a trial. Well, I didn't go through a trial. My, my nephew went through a trial. And, and this was a hard trial as far as I'm concerned because he had a tumor on his brain. Now, I want you to understand something. This is a young man in the Lord, but you could tell that he was sound and stable in his faith. Because when I talked to him, I sensed no fear at all. And, and I could tell that he was resting in the promises of God. And, and sometimes what happens when you're really not rooted and grounded in faith, then when you go through a trial or a test like that, your faith is shaken yeah. because you really don't know the end result. See, he had, he saw the end from the beginning. He, 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 he was able to see it before he saw it. And that's why he didn't have to worry. He had no anxiety, no stress whatsoever. And when I talked to him, he, he told me, he said, you know, um, it's going to be all right. He was talking just like that. And, you know, he was at peace with this situation. And, and it blessed me 
to see the stability in his life. Because I know some other people who surround him that, that didn't have that kind of assurance. They, they didn't have that kind of stability. And it was like, well, you know, this could happen, that could happen. And I'm saying none of that could happen. No, no, you got to see it before you see it or you never see it. You got to learn how to rest in the promises of God. You, you got to know that, okay, I'm going through this, but God already paid for this. He, he already paid for my healing. He already paid for my deliverance. And, and if he paid for it with his life, then I'm not going to pay for it, stress myself out about how it's going to happen. I, I'm just going to rest in the promises, God, uh, that says it's already done. So that's what he did. He rested in the promises of God and, and, and went through and came out like a champ. And all I'm saying to you is we are all going to go through some trials in our life. You can't escape trials and tribulations. We are all going to go through it. The Bible says in Romans that we should glory in tribulations. Glory in tribulations for tribulations were patience and patience experience. Experience hope and hope will make us not ashamed. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. See, see, and, and when you go through one trial and you come out, you, you ought to rehearse in your victories. You ought to remind yourself of, I remember when. See, that's what David did. He said, I remember when the bear came. I remember the lion. And, and, and God delivered me out of the hand of the paw of the bear and, and the lion as well. And he'll deliver me out of this hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. So when you go through something, you ought to remind yourself of what you've been through before. All of us have been through some times. If you go back and think there were some things you were struggling with at one point that you got past now, and you use that as a launching pad to go through the next situation. Because if God did it then, he'll do it again. Amen. He's the God that'll do it again. And all we got to do is put our confidence and our trust in him, knowing that he'll walk us through no matter what. We've got to have confidence. We've got to allow the patience to do its work because patience has a job to do. And when I allow patience, patience is one of the fruit of the spirit. You know, the, the way you grow your patience is by being patient. <laughs> it's just so crazy, but that's just the way it is. The way you grow your joy is by being joyful no matter what. Joy is not happiness. Happiness comes and goes. Joy, it comes from the word of God. I would say the joy of the Lord is our strength. So my joy doesn't come from my circumstance or my situation. My joy comes from the Lord. And when I'm fellowshipping in, in fellowship with him, I've got joy all over me. I've got the joy of the Lord. And that's my strength. And I know one thing that no nothing can penetrate my life before it goes through what? His nail printed hands. And when he goes through his hands, he massages it. So it could do us good. So we are we're gonna go through some things, but we gotta learn that everything we go through is refining us, is defining us, is purging out the things in our lives that will hinder us from going into our destiny. God has purpose for every one of our lives. And listen, you wouldn't have been born if God didn't have something He needed done that made you necessary. You may have not heard that before. Maybe you have, but I'm telling you that you're carrying something the world needs. You came to deliver something to your generation. And the enemy will try his best to stop you from bringing what you came to deliver. So I'm telling you that you're going to go some things. You're going to go through some trials and tribulations, but they are designed to refine, to define, and to purify you so that you could be prepared to deliver what you came to bring. I tell you, God has a word for you today. I want you to be encouraged because I know we all go through some things. And don't, don't question, Lord, because sometimes we, why me, Lord? Why not me? Why not you? Why not you? Jesus went through. Why can't you go through? I want you to know that you'll come out on the other side. You'll come out purified. You'll come out refined and ready to, to be used by God. But Because you can't be used by God until he purges out the stuff in your life that's hindering you from doing all God wants to do. He wants to get rid of the attitude. He, he wants to deal with some of that stuff in your life that you've got, that dog DNA. 
you know, sometimes we have to look back and realize that we got to lean on our gene. Lord have mercy. Oh, man. I said we got to lean on our gene. And the thing that you operate in, your grandmother had. Praise God. And you got it because it was a generation curse. And it, it was a race. It was a curse attached to a race of genes. And that stuff has to be dealt with. If you keep living in those old attributes, those old behavior patterns, you are never going to see the glory of God on your life. You got to recognize that that is not from heaven. Yeah. That that that's grandmother ways. Okay. Grandmother did it just like that. I'm doing it just. It just you know why? Because it's a propensity. It's in our DNA. It, it's a lean on our gene. Once we realize that that's what it is, we can deal with. It, praise God. But sometimes we don't want to admit it. You know, I, I'm just that way. No, you're not that way. The devil is a lie. Wake up with an attitude in the morning, man, whatever. The, the devil is a lie. You went to bed, man, and you woke up, man. And, and, and guess what? Some people just mad anyway. They're just mad because. Some people don't even realize that, that the stuff they went through in life has made them bitter. Not better, bitter. See, trials and tribulations will make you bitter or better. I was talking to a young man, uh, we worked together at an apartment complex, and I was telling him that the lady in the office is mean as a junkyard dog. You know what he told me? He said, if it wasn't for the guy who owned this building, I'd have been fired. Though. Everybody that come pay their rent said they can't stand to come in the office. Like, she almost on bike. You know, I mean, she sat on bikes. She looked at bikes about it. I said, my God, what is wrong with her? And look at her. One day she had the nerve to call me, call me in the office to whisper. She told me, she said, listen, the people complain about, you know, you don't blow off the post. And she said, but I like you. <laughs> she said, I like you, I'm telling you. I said, I sure appreciate it. I got out of her, I told him, I said, if she like me, I hate to see somebody she don't like, because she looked like she growled at everybody. But I told him, I said, you know what? Whatever she went through, whatever she went through has affected her. And it's in her, she can't help herself. She's just mean like that, no matter what. And sometimes we got to check ourselves because we operate in that same spirit. We don't even realize it. You know, people say, what's wrong with her today? It ain't today's every day. You just call it on a bad day, but they got good days where you don't see that, but that stuff manifests at will. And, and that's something that we got to recognize. You know what? I got to deal with this. That's the reason why God is bringing me through these tests. Because you keep failing. You keep failing a test, you got to go through it again. You ever been to school, you fail a test, and the teacher tell you, you got to take that exam again. You got to take that exam again because you failed. You're not going to go through it to the next grade till you pass this exam. And so every test is designed to do you good. You just got to understand that nothing you go through is for nothing. Everything you go through is for something. And that's why he said, count it all joy or add up the value of what you're going to get out of this when you go through with the right attitude. See, because everything we go through, it makes you bitter or it makes you better. Mm -hmm. Look at your life. Look at the things you've been through and see how it affected you, whether it made you bitter or whether it made you better. You can tell because if you went through something that made you bitter, you still bitter. And so when you get around certain people, if, especially if they had anything to do with what you went through, you can tell because you're a little short, you're a little rough around the edges. Hallelujah. But you know, when you go through something, you can tell you the old came, you got a different spirit altogether. So you got to be careful. What you got to do is check your energy. You get around certain people, you got a bad energy. People say, oh, I don't know. She having a bad day. Yeah, yeah, you know, I ain't feeling her today. You know why? Because she ain't feeling her either. She, she, that's another spirit. That's why you got to be careful because sometimes we allow those other spirits to move in. And, and you walking around not even know that's somebody else. So why you mad? I don't know. I ain't mad. <laughs> she was saying, I, I, I ain't mad. Why are you growling there? <laughs> if you ain't mad, I mean, God, no, I hate to see you when you're happy. Praise God. But well, I mean, I'm just trying to tell you that you have to be honest with yourself. I, I'm going to tell you, I ain't going to use no name, but I, I know that there was a situation that just recently happened, and it was somebody close to me, and they didn't like what was going on. They didn't, they weren't feeling what was going on, and it affected them. And so they had an attitude. 
Oh, uh, you could tell they, they didn't want to talk much. They want to sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and look, you could tell everything was on edge. And it was because of what was going on. Now, they said that what was going on didn't bother them. <laughs> but it did. It put them in bondage. And, and they didn't even, just everybody could see they were locked up with them. Handcuffed down. Wow. Yeah, and, and, and so, you know, even me and my wife talked about it. That's said, you know, that that's just a game. I'm telling you, he got shot. Praise God. But I mean, but he couldn't see it because of the effect of his life. And then, you know, it took a couple of days for him to recover. You know, sometimes we walk around with handcuffs on and everybody see it but us. And listen, you can go to church with your handcuffs. They got keys on the pulpit and you leave with them on. <laughs> I did it good to unlock them. All you do is say something. Praise God. Don't come to the sanctuary locked up. My God, that's the worst place in the world to come. But I want you to know that the trials, the tribulations are all designed to do us good mm -hmm. and to build character in our lives so that we can become more like him. Listen, listen at this. There's two things I want you to be mindful of when, when you're dealing with trials and tribulations, two tragedies that could be tragedies in crisis. One is it will make us withdraw our generosity. When we're going through something, yep. especially a financial situation, we kind of draw, we withdraw our generosity, which is the worst thing you could do. You ought to even give more in time. It's giving more tells God that I'm trusting you. You're my source. Mm -hmm. When I hold back, what I'm saying, I trust in my own resources. See, and you're telling God you don't really trust him. Uh, that's one of the things is we withdraw our generosity. And the second thing is we compromise our values. Those two things are very, very important. And if you notice people who are going through some stuff, there's two things that they're tempted to do. One is they withhold their generosity. And the other thing is they'll compromise their values. Uh, compromise your values. Very, very dangerous. Because sometimes we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll get loose. Uh, I, I like to say get loose uh, to get what we need, you know. And you better be very careful because you can't afford to compromise your values. I was thinking, you know, me and my wife was watching uh, this gospel, uh, I think it was the, the awards. And they were, but I'm serious, these people was anointed. God, they, they, I, I was so blessed by all the artists. But what I was thinking, uh, they were all magnifying the Lord. And I was saying, we sing and we worship the king. But there's a battle going on. We need to get in the ring. And I said, our values, our morals are all being challenged and compromised. And if we don't get in this fight, and listen, the Bible said, lift up your voice like a trumpet. We got to, man, listen, we better open our mouths and stop just letting everything just pass right by us. Because I promise you, if we don't stand up and say something, we're going to lose our children. We're going to lose everything. Because, I mean, the devil is coming from every angle, trying to steal our morals, our principles, our values. You know, if you don't watch it, you'll compromise in every area. And, and that's just the real thing. And nobody wants to say, I, I said, where is the church? Right. When all the world, I said, listen, there's no way in the world you could take my tax uh, money and use it to put a show on that's going to teach my grandchildren that homosexuality is okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Public broadcasting has taken my tax dollars and promoted uh, gay relationships in front of our children. And nobody said anything about it. I hadn't heard not one person get on the TV or the radio and say, listen, we're not happy. You know what I'm saying? So why is it that they just let it go by like that? It's kind of like the church. I, 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 I know a lot of pastors. And, you know, they got big, big tithers in their church. And some of the church members have uh, different uh, functions that, that are not godly. And they won't touch that because, I mean, they ain't going to touch it. You know that because that's going to challenge those people and stop them from giving and supporting their ministry. But that's compromise. 
And whatever you compromise to keep, you will eventually lose. So we, we've got to be uh, more steadfast. We've got to stand for something or you're going to fall for anything. We've got to learn how to stand up for what we really believe and fight for, for our children, fight for our kids and for, for their education and, and for their moral stand so they can understand that we do have principles that we live by. And we are not going to compromise those principles at no cost. I, I mean, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to stand up no matter what. And listen, I'm willing to go to jail for what I believe. So if it comes to that, and, and I have to say I'm not marrying two men, then you could take me to jail. I'm not going to violate God's word at no level. That's just where I'm at with it. And so everybody else, you, you want to go with the flow, you go right ahead but I'm going to be the one going against the grain. I promise you. So I want you to go over with me to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, because I am talking to believers tonight. Uh, and so I want them to see what the word says concerning ministry. Uh, in the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, it says, therefore, since we have this ministry, and let me, let me say this to you. Everybody has a ministry. It's called the ministry of reconciliation. That means God has called all of us to reconcile men back to God. And I promise you this, if you've got a relationship with God, you got a desire and a passion to see other people come to know Jesus in a personal way. And if you don't, check your bucket. it got a hold it. Therefore, since we have this ministry, and have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling God's word deceitfully, but by a manifestation of the truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That means we go to live upright. But even if the gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are dying, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe. Least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For if it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of his power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet we're not crushed. We're perplexed but we're not despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. And through all of that, we're always carrying about in our bodies the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ so his life may be made manifest in our bodies. So that means that we're going through things all the time. But like I said, he said we're, we're going through hard trust, but we're not done. Not down, but not knocked out. See, you, you're going to go through some things. And, and the thing about that is, is when you're going through, you ought to have be believers that will encourage you that you're going to come through this. You're coming out. You're coming out stronger than you went in. You know, a, a lot of times we got believers that will be beating you up while you're going down. Well, I know it was coming. He deserved it. Oh, my God. Don't put your mouth on nobody because the same measure you meet another, it's going to be measured to you again. You better be careful what you say when people are going through because you're going to go through on the same level. It's important to understand that God knows exactly what we need to put us in a position where we could be used. Nobody wants to go through anything, but you're going to have to go through some stuff. If you're going to be purged, because God has to purge out the leaven. He has to get out the stuff in your life that is not uh, conducive for where he's trying to bring you. And so it doesn't feel good. I'll be honest with you. But it's going to do you good. 
Mm -hmm. I said, it's not going to feel good, but it's going to do you good. And, and a lot of times, like I said, when we're going through our trials and our tribulations, the enemy tries to get us to, to withdraw or to isolate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the devil wants to get you isolated so he can violate you. I, I want you to know that when you're going through, you need to get around believers who can strengthen you while you're going through. That's the whole point, is that we need to find people of like faith mm -hmm. who can encourage us while we're going through. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil isolate you because he wants to isolate you, like I said, so he can violate you. He can do you dirty when you're away from uh, the body of Christ, when you're not around people who can support you while you're at your weakest point. He knows when you're wrong, so he's trying to lure you away. Uh, he'll get you away from the body of Christ, away from people who can support you so that he can do you even worse. So I'm telling you that when you're going through your trials and your tribulations, call your brother, your sister. You know, let them know. Say, man, pray with me. I'm going through something right You don't have to go on details as what you're going through. But just let them know I need you to get an agreement with me. Even in some cases, you need me to fast with you. I've had times where brothers call me and say, man, look, we need to fast. You know, we need to fast. I need you to fast with me. I'm going through something. I need to break this thing off my life. I don't even ask what it is. I just agree that we're going to fast about this and God's going to meet us right where we are. Because when you ask for prayer, what you're saying is, I can't do this by myself. And, you know, there's power in agreement. Where two or more touch and agree, anything they ask will be done. And where two or more gather in his name, he's in the midst. So God is always there. He's always working on our behalf. And listen, when you're going through dark times or when you're going through a tribulation or a test or a trial, normally what you need to do is find somebody going through something else. See, because if you sow into somebody else's life, whatever you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. The, the thing about that is, is when we find ourselves in a place where we've isolated and now we're depressed, and before you know it, we're in a bad place. Don't get in a bad place. When you sense you're going through something, call for assistance. Call for your brothers and your sisters. Get around some people who are spiritual enough to strengthen you while you're going through. Because that's what you need. You need unity of the faith and you need a bond of peace. You need somebody to say, let me tell you something, brother. I know what you're going through, but it's going to be all right. I got your back. I'm holding you up in prayer. You, you're not going through this by yourself. You got a whole family of people that's going through it with you. And, and God is going to see that you come out on the other side. See, God will never let you go through anything uh, without going through it with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So even, even in times when it looked like God left us all by ourselves and you saw only two, two footprints, it was his feet carrying you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you thought it was you. You said, Lord, where you at? I was all by myself. No, you weren't. I was carrying you. You had to pass out. <laughs> you just didn't know it. I just throw my hands up. I, 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 got, I got lost in the trial, and it was too, too much for me. It was overbearing. Have you ever been through something where you just said, Lord, have mercy? I don't know how I came out of that one. You know, sometimes we try to figure it out. You can't, you can't figure God out. You got to see it in a figure. You, you got to see it before you see it or you'll never see it. You, you got to learn how to trust God no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I, I promise no matter what happens now, I'm able to say, well, praise God. You know, my Wednesday, dude broke my window, got my truck. I said, praise God. Yeah, it didn't happen overnight. You know, no, I said, hmm. My goodness, <laughs> I don't need this crap. You know what I'm but that attitude is gone. You know, I didn't been through enough to, to, to know now how to handle that. And you know, don't worry about it. You know, God will take what the devil meant for evil and turn it for your good. They stole my truck. You know, when I didn't complete, the truck was gone. The truck and the trailer. Like, what? On my birthday. <laughs> What a birthday present. That's how I get the devil say, I'm going to give him the best birthday ever. And I said, man, I can't believe this. My wife and took me out to dinner. I come home to o'clock. Like, Mom, my truck was out. They went to the bed, jump up the phone. I told him, go get the truck. He said, well, look, he said, shut the door. I went out there. I looked around. 
I went back in and said, where you parked the truck at? <laughs> In front of the door, I said, man, the truck is dog. Man, pull up the camera. I watched the dude. They took a couple of minutes to get in the truck. Yeah. Two of them working on the truck, trying to get in. The chick walking around, pulling on people's doors. Like, I know all three of them jumping my truck. Trailing yeah. on. And here they go. I said, my goodness, look at this. But guess what? God already knew. Listen, what the devil meant for evil, I ain't never saw that truck again. Yeah. Even a trailer. You know, for a little while, I was looking for the trail. <laughs> I said, you better start looking for it. <laughs> what you looking for? <laughs> Let it go. You know, I wanted to go find that new guy. I'm going to find who got it. See what you going to do when you find Then That's going to be another problem. You, know what you better let it go. <laughs> and look, God gave me a truck where I don't even have to pull a tree. See? Yeah, see, 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 something good came out. You know, what, what I thought the devil meant for evil, God turned around for good. I, I always wanted a big truck. I was tired of pulling the trailer because the trailer wore me up. I had to load the trailer, get home, I had to unload the trailer. And half the time I had to unload it, then go to work on top of all that. Now I just pull up, cut the truck off, get out of the truck, go by my bed. But see, I didn't see that. God knew that I needed that. And he let the devil come and took me. The devil come took my truck. <laughs> and look, it was a blessing. I don't know who they are, but I thank you. They come into, they did me a favor. They really did because they put me in a better place. See, sometimes what the devil means for evil, God will turn for your good. But you got to be able to see it. You got to be able to understand. Me, me, me and Antoine were working today. And I had a, a load of trees on my trail. There was a dude in front of us had a pickup truck and he didn't have that many trees. So I, I, I said, look, we could get him to take the trees we got put on his trail and we ain't got to go in the dark. So I said, I'm going to give him the $20 that I got to pay. And he ain't got to pay nothing. So I said, he said, man, I said, can we put our truck, put our trees on your trail this time? He said, yeah, we can put them on it. But I could tell we was about to hold up the line. So I said, you know what, buying a whole line because they got a bunch of people get in front of you. So it's going to cost you more than that. So I went to go and got in the line we got behind me. When I got to the thing to pay, right, to pay the $20, the man looked down at the truck. He said, you know what, bro? I ain't going to charge you. I said, well, praise be to God. <laughs> Look, so he wanted to give me the $20 I was going to get to do. Man, he said, man, just go easy, man. So I told him, look at that. I said, God, see, I'm going to for your life. Because <laughs> you need patience. You're trying to get a bag to take your tree so you go when I'm trying to build some patience in your life. Go ahead on back there and unload that stuff. <laughs> well, I tell you, God is good all the time. So I told him, I said, look at that. God, gave, God see, I got lunch for you, but I need you to be patient. I want you to know patience. Let patience have her perfect work that you will be perfect and entire wanting nothing. And I know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to address somebody right now because I just heard what you said. You said, Lord, how long? How long is it going to take my husband to show up? I'm going to tell you, it's going to take as long as it takes for God to build you up and get you ready for a husband because you ain't ready for a husband right now. If your husband showed up right now, you'd run him off because God is still working on you. So when God's finished with you, he'll bring that guy into your life. And guess what? It, it won't even be the type of attraction you think it'll be because God will tie you together mm -hmm. in the spirit. Okay. Oh, you know that. You know what? I just got to know him that that's him. Oh, <laughs> I, praise God. I just know that's him. Praise God. I, I mean, you know, it, you know, because a lot of times, like I said, you want some six, nine, and fine, and ain't got no spine. <laughs> and some drunk jump off and he break out right before you. <laughs> you with big skin. You better believe God for a real man. You understand? But sometimes we walk by what we see and not what we believe. You got to believe God that God knows exactly what you need. God knows you better than you know yourself. Trust me. And, and in his timing, he's going to bring that guy, that woman in your life. Stop trying to do it on your own. Just rest in the promises of God. God knows what you need before you ask. The Bible says he knows what you need before you ask. I said before you ask. So he knows exactly what you need. And all I'm telling you is that we need to rest in the promises of God. Allow the joy of the Lord to be our strength.
Let us go through our trials knowing that God is faithful. And you know, I, I didn't get here overnight, but I promise you I'm at a place now where nothing could happen that it would shake me out of my faith. I have seen times where I got eviction notice. And you know what? I was resting. I really was. I was resting the promises, God. I didn't even know where we was going to move. But I knew God was going to move, so I didn't have to move. And sure enough, he moved just like he said. Amen. Uh, you know, moved us in a place where we stayed for almost two years and didn't pay a dime. Not one dime. Uh, the man said, I never asked you for no money. And he never did. But that was the grace of God. Could, could, could God do that for you? You know why? Because I was able to rest in the promise of God no matter what. I said, Lord, you know what? I've given my life to you. And you're responsible as a king. And I'm a citizen. And do you know that God is responsible as a king to take care of his citizens? That means, listen, if you, you can't pay your bills and people looking at you sideways, it makes the king look bad. So the only way the king doesn't show up on your behalf if you are not a law-abiding, abiding citizen. If you out there violate, you want to know why it's going to come short? Because you short. See, when you shortcut or when you make a shortcut, you cut yourself short. Mm -hmm. But I promise you this. If you stay connected, if you stay in obedience to the word of God, God will show up every time. I promise you will. And, and God will, sometimes God will put super on your natural, praise God. Now, y'all don't know nothing about that. God will put super on your natural. And you know what's amazing is it's according to your faith. Uh, your level of restoration is determined based on your level of revelation. When revelation comes, the struggle's over. You know, uh, some of that stuff on my life just flow on my children. You know, they get it free. Uh, I remember Devin, Devin had a little Cadillac uh, and she was at, we was at the Bible study and the lights uh, wasn't working. And so one of the lights, the headlight fell out and she was trying to go home. I said, you can't drive that car like that, man. You know, you got one headlight, you're going, you're going to get a ticket, you're going to jail. And she said, well, let's pray for God to move. And I said, well, I'm all in agreement with that. She said, if you got the faith to believe God to put the lights on, I, I believe it too. Man, we prayed, laid hands on that car. I said, get in the store. She got in and started to come. And look, they had light coming out where they had no headlight. <laughs> I promised. I said, no, that was look here. I said, they don't even have a headlight in there. But she had light and she drove that thing home. And I said, praise God. There was no difference than the guy who had no eyeball and the pastor laid hands on him and he could see out the fire. He didn't even had an eyeball. And he was reading on the board, whatever they had up there. They passed his eye up. And he didn't have an eyeball, but he was able to see. Don't tell me what God can't do. God was able to let him read out the sock. So don't limit God. God is not limited. If we limit God, it's because of our own faith. Because I promise you, Master P didn't come up with no limit. No, he stole that from heaven. That was God, who is the God. He's the El Shaddai. He's the God that's more than enough. He's not just enough. He's more than enough. Ain't that right, Jack? Praise God. Hallelujah. Jackie you know what I'm talking about. God will show up and show out in your life. When you believe in God, when you trust him, he'll take you from one place to the other. God is faithful. He who promised is faithful. Hallelujah. My name is uh, Gregory Baptiste from Behold the Lamb Ministries International, where we're changing lives one life at a time. And we, we're going to I want you guys to get in agreement with me. Uh, we're going to pray. Okay. All right. So they had a shooting at the graduation, and we're going to pray for Tasha and her family uh, right now. And there's some other people. I got another young man who's really struggling with a drug addiction, and we want to pray for him as well. I already uh, called uh, Pastor Mel. But he runs a drug program. We're going to put him in a drug program. Uh, he says he wants help. And so all we could do is help them if they really want help. We're going to do everything we can to get him in a stable environment where he can uh, grow in grace and knowledge of the truth. 
So let, let, let us join, and join me in prayer as we pray for Tasha and her children. They will protect them. But thank God, uh, you know, when you have those shootings like that, you never know the retaliation always comes and people are always getting hurt. And most of the time, the people who are innocent wind up getting hurt because these young men shoot, they shoot, they don't care where they shoot at, they just shoot in the air. So we're going to pray. Father, we just thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. We thank you for the power of agreement. And Lord, we know that uh, we're using our early lives to have interference. We ask that you would interfere into the affairs of men. We give you the glory, praise, and honor. We thank you for a covering over that family. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would strengthen that young man who's struggling with heroin right now. We break that addiction off his life. And I thank you, Lord, that the fatness of the word will break the yoke and set the people free. Uh, Lord, as he gets in the word, let his neck get so fat that the devil won't be able to yoke him any longer. We give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. Lord, I'm asking for those that have went through something hard, a hard trial or a hard test. I'm asking that you would strengthen them in their inner man so that they could be able to use it to the glory of God. I know everything we go through is for your glory. And so, Father, we thank you now. We give you praise, glory, and honor. If there's anybody under the sound of my voice, Lord, that does not know you in a personal way, or if they need to come back to you, Lord, maybe they've fallen away, maybe they've backslid, whatever that case may be, Lord, I pray right now that you would give them a desire to serve you. And Lord, I give you praise, glory, and honor, Father. Uh, we pray for them right now. We pray for the backslider, Lord. We pray for those that are broken, those that need deliverance, those that need healing, Lord. Those, those that are struggling with addiction, Father, we thank you right now that the power of the Holy Ghost is available to break that addiction off their lives. We give you all glory, praise, and honor. In your precious wow. name, we pray. Amen. 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 If you want to sow into this ministry, we're set up with Givelify. We also have a cash app, us, dollar sign, Behold the Lamb Church. And everything you sow into this ministry will be used to touch the lives of others. We've got great things uh, coming up. Uh, we got a lot of things we're doing, and I'm just excited about what God is doing. Uh, we're going to keep you posted. Uh, most of you guys, we got some guys from out of town that support this ministry. We're going to be sending you a notice because we've got some stuff going on that we want you to be a part of. And so you're going to have to make provision to come to New Orleans and celebrate with Behold the Lamb. Amen. Uh, we got great things going on. We got a lot of stuff we're doing and we're just excited about it. Uh, God bless you. God keep you until we meet again. Remember, we meet on Sunday morning. Nine o'clock in the morning, 1520 Alva Street in the night ward. We're between Claiborne and Robinson. And I promise you, we won't hold you long, but I guarantee you we'll make you strong. God bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm.